my gosh, we have a viewer. I told them it was bad. <laughs> yeah, you, you tell me if I'm on too. Because you were on when I saw it. Am I there? Josh and Mary show, episode three. We're celebrating our third uh, episode with um, banter. <laughs> hey, what did you observe tonight? See you were here for some of it. at the Vigil at City Hall in Portland, Oregon. talked about? Was it, was it his new plan? Oh, about like the end of the month and retreats. No, I was just making a joke, oh. <laughs> but he does have a plan. Does he have a new plan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants to, he wants to get friends together out on the mountain. It's exactly this is not an Occupy type plan, really. And what's a political? Relax. Relax. He's not driving a boat, is he? <laughs> he said on a river, is that oh, oh. taking a boat? swimming and once I get stubborn I... but it doesn't matter how uh, how far into the summer you are the water will still be ice cold you know stream coming from a mountain a glacier <laughs> something I learned Do you go swimming in, in cold water? What? So what do you think of going up with uh, Mike and a bunch of friends and occupiers? Going up and imagine there'd be swimming or fishing or imagine some drinking. I'm just guessing. Yelling out because I mean that's what you do if you're in the middle of nowhere, right? You have to yell. No, that sounds like fun. We have to be so quiet, you know, in town. It's 
sounds like fun to just... Ah! I went on a retreat once. Dramatic. These people with drama, and I, I didn't know them. Yeah, unfortunate. I think if I went with the, a lot of my friends here, So you were talking with Mike in the park, and then what? Well, we talked some more uh, by the hunger strike, and uh, we went to the 7-Eleven, and we got burritos. <laughs> so was, the evening was with Mike, and uh, did you visit with Cameron, or was he asleep by then? Cameron was feeling weak today, and I did not talk to him on camera as I usually do, so I will speak to him this morning, I hope, but I'm concerned. I mean, I've been concerned the whole time, but I'm watching, and, and this is the first day that he's felt lightheaded, but he said he also didn't sleep well last night, if at all, so if he really needed his rest, and he went to bed early. And then Michael, who I haven't seen in forever, who came and started playing electric guitar right there. <laughs> really well. He's great. That was a treat. So, anyway, I kind of checked on Cameron at that point to see if he could. I said, so I'm going to walk over here and see if Cameron stirs to show me that he's awake. I was just wondering, you know, if he's being kept up or if he was out. He was either out or finally pretending to be. So. Okay, so uh, after the burrito, we ate a burrito at 7-Eleven. We didn't eat at 7-Eleven. Okay, I was yeah. there for this. Yeah. So right at some point you ran out. into me. Yeah. Okay, ran so. into you before we went to 7 Oh. Okay. Yeah. So you, you came over. Graham. Yes. Okay. Graham's back. Yay. We had some laughs. Billy. That's Billy. Oh, Bodie is the guy. Okay, did I see y'all? Okay, yeah. Like both of those people. Anyway. This is, this is for Graham. It's an inside joke. I don't know if he gets online at all. <laughs> okay. So, that our special bus stop, and then... Okay, so this guy is just standing by the by the uh, drinking fountain, and Josh has been entertaining another fella um, who was like, "How do you do this?" Yeah, you had mentioned that I come here a lot or something because he already was somewhat aware that I was here or something and introduced us. Or, yeah. yeah, just just just. For yeah. Why are there so many people here? What did you say? The little occupation's been going on about six months. Vigil. Mary. Et cetera. Not much, et cetera. Yeah, but then you, 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 you will learn more than I 
Well, he was just asking me questions. He's asking you questions? Yeah. Like, why the hell would you do this? And I said, well, at camp, we were integrated. And I did not know who was mentally ill, who was houseless, who was, you know, uh, debilitatingly, you know, intoxicated. You know, this is the bus. Line 14, Hawthorne, to Foster, 1094. places and that's when I found out that half of us didn't have a roof over our heads. Some of us uh, who were uh, you know, participating in this process of modifying proposals and you know deciding what to write on signs to communicate uh, were then suddenly rocking and not registering um, and I found out that there were a lot of symptoms that seemed to fade away when people were in a natural community with a you know a gift economy and a purpose you know and uh, that a lot of this that we see that I think folks think is a reason that people are houseless, oh, they're like this, so they're out here because they can't manage, um, are actually symptoms of a life-threatening condition of not having any shelter or stability. So I tried to stay with them because everybody who was in the camp holding it down with the tent seemed to reason the platform that there was a movement so I want to camp again. Anyway, that's what I told him. It took me about that long. And then he was like happy. He was like, good job, you know, kind of a guy. And he, I saw him do that a little bit to you too. He seemed like, way to go. But then this guy, like there's another person, a person who I ignored. I was just gonna let him pass by, but he got to the end here, and he uh, did he say hi to you or you to him? He was walking by. Probably said something. That's why I didn't see him. And uh, then he told you that he wanted to go to detox, so we walked over to Justice Center, who sent us over to the police station asked about cheers and they just gave me the non-emergency dispatch number and so they'd send somebody over and you never saw anybody but finally a cop came by and asked him if he still wanted to go to him to a place where he apparently couldn't even check in but could hang out until morning so that was weird Hooper center not That was cool because I didn't know that you were going to wait with them and that was very nice. So way to go. So you came back. What was going on when you got back? Anything?
talked to Nick at night. He never came back. I was hoping Joe would come back. He came back from Rainbow Seed Camp, and uh, he had to come back for like $250 worth of dried food and all sorts of stuff. He is bringing back 10 water guns for the kids because he just found out that there are a lot of families coming to Rainbow this year. He didn't expect as much of a kids camp, a kids village, whatever, uh, as there is. <coughs> I was really excited about that, but he had taken so much for the seed camp that he had to make a second trip, so he's just back for a night. Came and visited us on the way. Hey, we're having our talk show. How are you doing? I'm good. This is How our camera. You? Say hi. Hi. I dislocated my finger. At work. At work. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Surprisingly. I'm not feeling so bad. Yeah. A little tired, but yeah. you know. Are you going to get some shut eye over here? It's a really peaceful time. It's Saturday, so they're not going to wake us up. Really? Mm hmm. Oh. And we got a mat. There's a nice couple of mats inside the box still. So, uh,. And there's probably a blanket nearby, I think right to the side of the box. So if you want to curl up a sidewalk, there's there's uh, some peace and quiet to be had. Okay. Well, I think I should probably do that. Can somebody help me? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll help. Awesome. Um, Sweet. So, uh, do you... Do you want me to just make something up for you? Yeah. Okay, you, you come down and be the host. Okay. Actually, you're the host, and this is your guest on the talk show. This is the Josh and Mary show, and you're our first guest. Um, make sure the camera's on you. And uh, I guess we're rolling. All right. <laughs> I've had a pretty eventful night. How about yours? Besides the finger? Yeah, you know, um, I, uh, I, I, I work at a club, and um, this particular club is, is a special club um, that require um, rooms with beds in them. Um, and uh, I, I was making the bed of one of the rooms and I jammed my finger and dislocated it somehow and so um you're gonna go to the hospital I'm, I'm definitely trying to get to the hospital the, the problem is the street car doesn't start running until like 8.15 so I'm thinking it would be a good time for me to get a couple hours of shut eye you know, um, you know, and then go over there as soon as the max or the streetcar starts running and take care of that. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't hurt so bad when they do the readjust. But um, it it looks pretty gnarly. It doesn't look good, so I can't, as you can see, I can't, I'm not trying to flip you off, but I can't lift it any more than that, you know, it's a, uh, it hurts pretty bad, um, yeah, I feel like I've just, like, put a string around it really tightly for several hours and cut off the circulation that's kind of what it feels like it doesn't feel good but, but you, you have feeling I have feeling in it um, so it's not like broken horribly which is good but I could kind of feel it like you know a little bit wiggling yeah and so I don't want to do the readjustment myself because 
I think it, it would hurt kind of bad, you know. Um, although they say that after you read Just it doesn't hurt anymore, mm. you know. I still feel like I would have to be pretty doped up on something to, uh, to, to feel no pain as that procedure is taking place. Yeah. But, uh, other than that, yeah, it was pretty eventful. Um, before then. Yeah. I had a wonderful evening up until that point. Yeah. Met a lovely, met a lot of really lovely people. And, uh, you know, danced a little bit. You know, ate. And, you know, it was great. I had a great time. It's a great club. I, I strongly suggest it to anybody into that type of thing. Um, I don't really want to go into too many details because some of you that know me, you know, know that I'm a spiritual person and this is everything that is not spiritual. I guess I could say it. I'm talking about clubs, that's all. How are you? You look tired. Yeah. 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 That 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 can make one tired. Which is exactly why I'm trying to get a couple of hours of shut eye. Despite the two rock stars that I had last night. I would have had more, but I just didn't want to go overboard and be all like uber wired and have people think I'm tweaking. Because I definitely don't tweak, so, you know, stay away from the crystal meth people. That will kill you in horrible ways that you won't know until it's actually happening. So don't do it. Bad idea. A public safety announcement it's brought to you in part by the Mary and Josh show. And you know this with your special guest um, announcer, Hassan Cross, aka Rex King, aka Little Michael. Yep. Word. I do think that it's good that I can still have a sense of humor while, you know, all of this horribleness is going on in my finger. Hopefully, I don't wake up and it's just swollen to the point where I look like a, 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 a big guy, if you know what I mean. It's a few hours ago. Yeah. I think that that's as far as it's going to go. You know, as far as, like, you know, Puffing out and just being bloated. And Mary has returned. Briefly. Well, for the moment. It for a moment. Like. I'm just uh, checking the camera. I made up a bed. We don't have a pillow. That's perfectly fine. I will use this thing right here. Okay. See? Right so, on. Would you like to show me where it is, or? It's actually the farthest down. Oh, the furthest down. That one. Okay. Yeah, right on the inside of Tim. Awesome. Thank you, right Uh, this right here. here. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm glad that Mary and Josh could join us. And, well, I'm glad that I could join Mary and Josh. Let me put it that way. Um, yeah. You know, it's been a very, very productive evening um, in a lot of ways. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, how has your evening been? Oh, audience of mine? Oh. Uh, woo! Yeah. Heckle! <laughs> heckle, heckle. You're not doing the right job. Oh, right, you're not doing the right job. Oh, me? Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> Applause, applause, yeah, yeah. The crowd goes wild. Justin Bieber. You want to see that person. I don't know who that is, but you know there there I I have very, very you know, interesting feelings about Justin Bieber. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know That's a never a good start to a sentence. No, it's really not. Because okay. I, I don't think that, that the, the audience would appreciate <laughs> I don't know. I what, think they what would. I, what I want to do to him. Okay. Well, I I don't know. I'm having second thoughts already. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's such a, a, a literal scrawny person that I feel I can overtake him. Okay. There's some information. Yeah, we'll just put it that way and leave it there. Yeah, how about I, that? Actually, we could have left it probably before the word beaver. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, absolutely, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, we could have left that one alone and I w I'd be happy. So, oh. uh, so you're going to stay at the City Hall Hotel and get some shut-eye and then in the morning, which it is morning, but it's Saturday morning, so morning doesn't have to start till 11, really. Uh, <laughs> are you going to go to the hospital? Well, I'm planning on, on getting a few hours here till about 8.15, 8 o'clock, 8.15, because that's when the streetcar runs, and then I could just catch the streetcar and take it straight up to um, oh, good, lovely. good Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's over there on 22nd and Northrop. That's Good Samaritan? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Good Sam. Yeah. I, I, the only reason why I really truly know that it's Good Sam is because about five years ago I was dating this young lady who decided that she was going to overdose on heroin and crack cocaine. And Together? Yeah. So how do you know which one it was that she OD'd on? It or was, is it a combination that it made was, her OD? It was the I combination, gotcha. but okay. it was, I mean, she decided to take some heroin. And heroin is not good. Don't do heroin or crack cocaine. They're bad for you. Another public service announcement brought to you in part by the Mary and Josh show. <laughs> Josh and Mary. The Josh and Mary show featuring Hassan Cross, a.k.a. Rex King, a.k.a. Little Michael. Y'all know what's up. <laughs> I didn't have to shoot you with my a.k.a. Yeah. Ooh. It's been a good day. Ooh, see, you, right? See, I don't want to get shot with the a.k. though. A.k.a. AKA, ooh, yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> see, that's, that, that's... That was Ice Cube. Exactly. It's been a good... It's been a good day. I gotta say it was a good day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so... You're gonna go to the hospital, but you're gonna get some shut eye, so you should do that. Yeah, I think I will. See my finger? Do you see it? It doesn't look good, does it? I'm not flipping you off again, I'm just like no, showing it, you. It, it looks like a little brontosaurus. It does, it looks like a little claw <laughs> that's not, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's messed up. So you gotta go get it set. And I can't believe you're not in excruciating pain. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm not in, in more pain than I am. It My hurt. father used to have this for basketball all the time. It actually hurt when it happened. You know, like, I didn't... 
obviously you don't plan on things like that happening, you know, but... You Unless know. you're my dad and have done it to every finger. Yeah, you know. Well, you his know. hand is like crazy. His fingers go in all sorts of directions I'm and his knuckles you. are just giant. Yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Your dad played basketball? For a long time, yeah. Wow, NBA? No, just uh, just with his friends. Word, yeah. He'd get down real low, real low and dribble, and he'd kind of move to the side mm -hmm. as he did this. And his friends called him the crab. Yeah. Right. See? You got arms going out this way and coming back in, the ball going between your legs and around your waist and yeah, you just like come up with miraculous shots. Speaking of basketball, dude, I'm really mad at the Miami Heat for winning and I'm really mad at the Oklahoma City Thunder for losing because Kevin Durant is amazing. He should have been in Portland. And, you know, I think he's doing this to show Portland a lesson that, you know, I mean, once again, we pulled a Michael Jordan. And what people, if you're not from Portland, that simply means that we picked a guy named Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan in the 1984 draft pick. And as we all know, who Michael Jordan became. Yeah, and one of the worst baseball players. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. He wasn't the worst. He, he was pretty bad. Was so, he? Yeah, he wasn't a great... He wasn't and didn't a, he play basketball, too? He was... Yeah, he was... I, I think. I think. Maybe. Maybe. I think so. I think he played, like, for Chicago. Maybe. Yeah. I, maybe. Maybe. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> Did you know that actually? I think I saw him do a picture for like Nike once too. Yeah, a couple, couple commercials and, <laughs> you know, maybe a shoe. So, yeah, so Portland could have had him, but I'm glad that we got Sam Bowie. Yeah, I'm glad we got Sam Bowie too, because he became a nobody. <laughs> Oh, and it's great when, when you pass up great players for nobodies. Yeah, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Although if you couldn't see Michael Jordan. Anyway, so we didn't get Kevin Durant. And this is something that 99 talks a lot about. Yeah. In fact, he has a segment he calls, hey, this is 99, y'all. Um, Hey, this is 99, y'all. I'm gonna hit you with the cool gun. The cool gun. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. And I'm just Durant. gonna say that we got shafted with a bad pick, and he talks about the whole, but he doesn't name the name who he got. Right. He says, you all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And then he stews. Oh, yeah. And then he breaks out of it a little bit, and he starts going, and the game is 99. So he's gonna be happy. Yeah. Because he likes Kevin Durant. Well, Kevin Durant lost the last game. Oh, he lost. Yeah, they, they lost. So he's going to be unhappy. Yeah, he, he is not going to be a happy guy. But he, see, here's the thing, because, like, they could have won. Want to win. It's possible they could have won that game. But minute. see, what happened was, you know, they, they started the game, you know, you know, at, you know, zero zero, obviously. And then, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, somehow. Oh my god. Yeah, you know, oh my god. Yeah, and then uh, somehow yes. they, they didn't score for the first like five or six minutes of the game. I think they scored like two points. I think at one point the score was actually two to eighteen. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And then like it was <laughs> they like started yeah. Zero zero. I think they started at zero zero. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I doubt it. <laughs> wow. That's so funny. <laughs> Okay, commentator. What's that guy's name, Dennis? The the guy who was a comedian who 
Dennis Leary? No, not Dennis Leary. Good, because I don't like the last name Leary. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little cautious of that. I'm a little Leary Miller. the name. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I'm a little Dennis Leary. Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller. That sounds like a Dennis Miller comment. He yeah. said he was not a good uh, sportscaster, apparently. I didn't get his com comedic stylings either, so. Yeah, I think I could have done without... Definitely. <laughs> you know? Anyway. Okay, well, you should get some shut eye. I made a. Uh, I pulled up some sidewalk for you. All right. And it's by our uh, very good caretaker, Tim. Yay. It'll be safe and sound. Yay. I'm really happy about that. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully you'll get up and get over to what you say is good, Sam. Yeah. Well, my, my girlfriend almost od my ex-girlfriend five years ago. So, I'm single now, so <laughs> if there are any single females watching, I'll let your boy. There you go. Word. <laughs> I saw that. Alright, get to bed. Alright, I'll see you later. Peace. <laughs> That was cool. So that was our first guest. Yes. Is that our first guest? On the camera. Yeah. <clears throat> Joe. telling me about his first night being homeless and it sounded you know he, he actually read from his journal he didn't know what we were doing here but he had heard he saw in the paper from Cameron which is incredible because this is not the first time we've heard this and they get confused you know and say oh you guys are here and I came to see read about it in the paper, but when you asked him about it, it was Cameron. So I explained what Cameron is doing and that it's independent, but we're in solidarity with one another. We are fighting for the same things um, in two different ways and uh, try to, you know, but Cameron was asleep and um, he'd been by before. Uh, so no, he hadn't been by to see Cameron. That was another film. So when he, um, when he said that, sure, he would do a little interview. It was in between uh, our musical entertainment on the telethon. And um, he read from his journal. And it went something like, so I was homeless and I found an easy chair and a bunch of people that I liked and my friend first gave me twenty dollars so I was set there and I found a fifth of you know liquor or part of one you know it started to rain but it was really nice rain. I was like this is it, this is this is the experience and uh Wow, has has every night been so cushy? And he said, Well, no, that was it. Night one, two weeks ago, he got to go couch surfing after that. You know, got to stay with someone, a friend. This is night two. So night two is here. I, you know, I explained. I, I, I mean, it was neat. I got to tell him. You, you know, we have blankets. <laughs> Here's some coffee or cocoa or whatever. Here's some awesome people that he hung out with. 
then uh, there was, um, you know, there's a few new people I've gotten to know. They just stumble by. Not stumble, but, you know, they stumble upon us. And, you know, actually another person came by because of the camera he was visiting. His name is Jim, and Jim is a housing justice. Did you see him interview with Jim? And I tried to call him. So we're still going to try to make arrangements to have Jim back. That's amazing. We've got to talk to him again because he's got a lot to tell us about all the corruption and the fight to not spend, you know, not spend. You got to think here. Yeah, forty-seven million dollars to house less than 150 people. Now, I had heard that, that units were, you know, about $220,000 a piece, but his math, he said, no, it's like double that. We're talking about the Bud Clark building and another building or are doing also $47 million, oddly. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, uh, he came by to, to, to see Cameron, and we were just an accident, but it's rather conspicuous. I want to show the viewers what we have here. Be right back. You want to come? They're used to that by now. Not good. Boy. Why is that happening? seen much of Graham because he's been off with the bus. They've been back. The bus is not back. The bus is in Washington. Um, Graham said the bus wasn't good for Occupy. But what was good is that there were people who had shelter. So, I don't know. And here's the 14 again.
Day 15 for Cameron now. We've entered day 15, half a month. Anyway, um, so we've got uh, Graham. We, oh my gosh, we have a new girl. Um, and she has said this off to the side near the camera, but she was thinking about not doing heroin anymore. And that is a very difficult deal she's going through and she just liked us and felt safe and thought she wanted to do it. She just happened on us and with a group of friends who have moved on and uh, Tim kind of took her under his wing and she's into the metaphysics stuff with him so they had a lot of neat conversation and he's really pulling for her but uh, she's got a lot of friends here now. Like real, I mean, it was it was pretty amazing, and uh, you know, we kind of held on to her when she was shaking, and she fell asleep tonight, so she made it one night. That was amazing. I'm proud of her. And then, uh, and one of the security guards was asking about her, worried about her, proud of her. What else? We've got, uh, who else do we have here? We have all sorts of folks that, so we have Ivan. Um, who's another City Hall Hotel regular? Tim, of course, is here. Matthew is here. Um, Matthew has been reaching out uh, to some people that could really help us. So um, he's looking for a suit, like a dress shirt, collar, long sleeve dress shirt, you know, thick material. Um, so it, it's 2X and if anybody has one to hand to Matthew, the reason being is he is going to uh, go to his brother's friends. His brother's friends are with a group. They're not the park rangers, but they're with a group of people that we really like to have as allies and, and good people, really good people. So I don't want to say more than that because he doesn't want to get anyone's hopes up, but they're people that we like. I think that's really awesome. So he wants to dress up a bit, and uh, he just needs like a maybe some new jeans. And uh, you know, I don't know what he wears for jeans, but he he asked if we could find him a dress shirt. So if you have a two X long sleeve collared thick, you know, nice shirt, he'd really appreciate it. And just you know, Matthew. Um, now there's two mats. Uh, that I know of, at least two, but this is the, um, Matthew, let's see, when did he show up? We had our first meeting. Colonel had a meeting and we kind of sat in a circle or talked in a circle. It was in the winter. I know David Love was there. Uh, Voldemort was there. And, uh, um, that was interesting. So that was his first time. It was like the second day. He, no, that was his first day here. He, he saw it on Facebook oh. or something. So that was Matthew. 
anyway he's really good at, at reaching out um, I saw that when the city came by the uh, night of it was 2.20 a.m. and the, I missed my day on the 11th I came by on the 12th for part of the night, but uh, I called in sick on the 11th, so it would have been, I don't know, so I was here the 13th, so it must have been the 13th, um, anyway, so 14th actually, the, at 2.20 a.m. we had the street cleaner come by and spray everybody with water which we have not had in a few weeks. Um, not since Mo was concerned that it was pesticide in there, or residue at least, because those tanks hold pesticide. Um, but they sprayed everybody with water, and there were no cars on the block. The only car on the block was the last slot where the zip car is parked right there. Um, so all the way from Jefferson down, they sprayed water, getting everybody wet. Most people slept through it. Um, some people were awakened and found all their clothes soaking, like the things that they had beside them. And so I ran trying to find the license plate or something. I didn't know what to do. While I'm doing that, I come back and Matthew was gone. He walked around the building and found uh, some city worker who gave him the uh, maintenance number. And he, he spoke, and I also did, with the supervisor who said that they would stop that practice and he started out, he said, and he was talking to Parks, and to this person, I think, you know, or, I, I don't know, I thought it was odd because it wasn't Parks, but he says, you know, I'm Matthew, and, you know, his first and last name, and I'm with Occupy Portland um, at the City Hall vigil, and uh, we played uh, softball with you guys, you know who we are? that were down there? Yeah, could you not, you know, could you, here's what happened, and do you think you could stop that? And they said yes. So uh, I also connected with the security, um, Gary Crane, who I always make jokes about. I love and hate the guy. I lean on the liking, but I can't believe some of the things that come out of his mouth that come from a place of ignorance. I don't think he's trying to be malicious, but he's the one. Why well, you could go to a shelter if you want to? Why not? You're just trying to be here to cause trouble because you don't like rules. Well, he likes rules, and whenever I talk to him, he says, "Well, I know you don't like any rules." That's how he always starts our conversations. Anyway, um, not this time. I called him up. And uh, I asked him for the evidence of what had just happened in case it didn't stop there and we needed to do something about that. Because, as he explained to me, and this is what I thought might be the case, those tapes are not erased, but they're recycled so that a week later they'll be recorded over. Um, and I was thinking more in the terms of it's difficult to get things out of archives, you know, it gets to be more of a procedure and a requisition and a form and a blah blah blah, so could he pull that? And he will. It's not certain that they'll be able to see anything. And uh, I don't really talk about how the security cameras can't see much on the sidewalk. <laughs> it, it, they, they rotate the cameras, actually, you know, it's kind of like they don't, they don't put cameras in every single one of them all the time, or they might not be trained on whatever in particular, I, I'm not sure. But uh, 
the monitor versus the recorder are diff different. And um, he's, you know, said that he would look. I told him when it happened, and um, he'll save that footage because. Uh, I don't know that it's going to stop. I mean, when I, I, I tried to tell him, well, that doesn't mean it's going to end just because his boss said not to, you know, because uh, I wouldn't think that a person in, in their company car, you know, a landscaping company or whatever it was that we saw, would blare their horn for the whole block. In a company car, you know, how's my driving? 1 800. You know, you'd think that they would be concerned about disturbing the peace and improper use of the horn and, you know, etc. and being called a little bastard. Um, waking everyone up on purpose. So, you know, this is a malicious act and, you know, it may not stop. So, there we go. And I, this is the second time that I have appreciated Mr. Crane very much. The other time was uh, when I had a talk to him um, with uh, another lady about a person who was a real perpetrator and um, was harassing women and being inappropriate with young women. At that point, um, he was presenting some danger. So not the norm. You know, this person had disassociated himself with Occupy and at that point I had no problem asking for some help there. So, you know, write to the studio if you don't appreciate that attitude. That is uh, 1221 Southwest 4th Avenue um, bus stop. Uh, I don't know the number. But anyway, I'm sure it'll get to us. It, you can actually just say attention, um, Vigil TV in Portland, Oregon. Send us your complaints and letters. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was he was very kind, and uh, I was I was really worried about talking to him because um, I thought that they would use this as an excuse to boot us out. And honestly, I started to cry because the uh, exact opposite was true. They were protective of us. And um, sorry to hear that, that we were having this problem. And recognizing that there were some vulnerable people who came here. So my attitude toward him has changed in that sense. Uh, but I still, I cannot believe that man. <laughs> and, and you'll you'll see, you know, he'll 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 be pretty harsh with people when he wakes them up in the morning. But he's been less so. So anyway, so why did I talk about Mr. Crane? It was something to do with oh yeah, because I was uh, I got that good response about this street cleaner. He was not happy to hear that. Thought that was pretty terrible. So, anyway, why was I talking about something that happened there about the street cleaner walking through? Oh, yeah. So Matthew was the one who had that practice stopped, and he also is somebody who will be able to get us some new friends and allies.